Well, I will call this meeting to order. Uh, September 15th, 2022, radio cash session. Uh, staff pledge allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, roll, roll call. Mayor Roger Perry. Here. Council President Adina Oliveris. Present. Councilor Jeff Hensley. Here. Councilor Ray Jackman. Here. Councilor Brian Lewis. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. Mayor. Do we have any visitors? See any? Have a motion to pay the bills. Make a motion to pay the bills. That's second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. So now we need a motion to accept the July 14th of 2022 special session. Make a motion to accept the minutes for the July 14th, 2022 special session. I'll second. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Okay, now we have the minutes for August 18th, 2020 radio session. I'll make, make a, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'll make a motion. For the August 18th, 2022 regular session. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No nays. Motion carries. This is the time to speak to the council mayor, public comment, or any on any subject, including what is on this on the agenda, except for public hearings. Time limit is limited to three minutes per person. Continue. Yeah, we don't have any comments on Facebook and there's nobody calling into Zoom, so no comments okay. there. So now it's uh, city, public, city recorder, public uh, city finances. All righty. Everybody got uh, what was included in the council packet. Did anybody have any questions? Nope. No? Okay. Good to know there was a request from a member of the public to go over a little more detail during council meetings uh, about the money that was spent. So. Um, I will say beginning in balance at the uh, beginning of uh, August for uh, our checking account was 78,000. Um, and the cleared balance at the end was 76,000. Um, there are a number of transactions that are listed in the packet. Nothing crazy happened. So there are two signatures in every check, so we know what's being signed. Uh, LGIP, uh, same deal. Um, we had uh, $114,000 at the beginning, and at the end, we had $120,000. So that was just our, our regular money that comes in, uh, came in there. Uh, we'll say uh, in the last month, we got our second tranche of HARPA funds. So we have all the money we are going to get. So we're going to do street grading, and we are going to do, um, uh, we're going to purchase a new programmable logic controller for the uh, Water plant. Water so that's that. Any other any questions? Cool. All right. Uh, city updates. So now that we've had all of our city ordinances online for a little while, um, kind of the next step in uh, my system for taking over and running an organization like this is uh, enforcement. So first you figure out where all the money is, then you figure out what the rules are, then you just kind of operate it. And then you start enforcing. So we're kind of in the enforcement period now. Now that all the uh, the rules are online, nobody has an excuse to not know. Before you had to come and look up, you know, 50 years worth of documents and not know what was what. But uh, there's not really any excuse anymore because all the rules are easily accessible. So uh, this week we had uh, 11 different property owners contacted about uh, unpaid water bills. So. Uh, all of those, most of those people were uh, door tagged today uh, and informed that there are some uh, billing uh, issues that they need to uh, start paying up. Um, I do know, um, I've looked at a couple of accounts, QuickBooks had some weird way of calculating that makes it look like they're unpaid balances when they're actually paid. So like there was one person I contacted, and they actually, QuickBooks officially said they have uh, bills that are due, but if I just look at I manually added and subtracted every invoice and bill payment, and they actually have a credit if you just look at that. So um, there are a couple where we sent a, uh, a notice that, hey, you have to start paying your water bills, but 
could be that QuickBooks actually had the error that says, no, actually, it's okay. Um, but there are some people who have some substantially large unpaid water bills. So we're getting around to that. So back to the, did uh, any of the 11 notices have the potential for being a QuickBooks snag? Yeah, there yeah, are a couple. Go in and, uh, so our, your intention is to go in and look at every single one and do that manual? Yeah, so I, mean, I did that uh, with the, the one person today. They had, I was going to contact them and go, hey, what happened? They, they paid and left a note and said, hey, um, can we just talk about what's on there? And they said, yeah, I think you've got, think you think we have some credit on there. And I said, well, QuickBooks doesn't say that, but I will go and look. So I tallied up all of their bills for the last 12 years. Turns out, yes, they do have a credit. QuickBooks just had a weird way of displaying the balance. So, so will this be an ongoing issue that, I mean, because you shouldn't have to do paper and pen every single time you click books, so it's yeah, going to be exhausted. It will be. I'll, I'll be going over this with the accountant a little bit okay. to see if she can just come up with a better way of figuring out what uh, is actually due for some people. There are some that are kind of obvious, like um, most people pay just the amount of their water bill. Mm -hmm. Some people pay a little bit more or a little bit less every time, and if they do that constantly, then it becomes a little less clear to figure out what's in there at the end of the day. Um, and then some people, they just, there hasn't been any payments at all for a while, so. Yeah. How long do we have there? Yeah. How long do we let them go before we shut them up? So uh, city ordinances say that after 61 days, if your bill is not paid, uh, then you have five days to pay it after you get a shut off notice. So that's that. So yeah. I do want to, I don't know if this comes in the council part, but I do want to talk about the cash issue. Did I bring that up when it comes to council or leave it here with finances? Um, let's go ahead and talk about it now. Okay. Yeah. So um, I was here one day where someone came in um, stating that they had paid cash and put it in the box, despite the fact that it says no cash payments, and he made the remark of, well, nobody's ever here. So... I made up two laminated signs that they, that bright say, do not put cash here. We're not responsible for the money. That, and then I made some other signs that can maybe go up on the door in the bulletin board. And then also, if you can turn it on an insert to go into people's bills that says, just because there's not a car here doesn't mean no one's here. Because I, I heard that remark as well from JD. Yeah. And call, because we're not open all the time. Call and we can arrange to come meet you. Do not leave payments. We're not responsible for them. Because, I mean, I really appreciate that someone wants to pay cash. That's their choice, though. Um, but we're not here all the time, and they shouldn't be putting money in there. And I don't know whatever happened with that gentleman, but he was adamant. I have a picture. I put cash in there still, and it was stolen. I don't know. So we're trying to work on addressing, addressing cash issues. So yeah. I know at one time we were looking at trying to do it online because I yeah. think with the big neon light uh, signs down there, there's a chance, you know, especially in a remote area, people get it. It's going to entice them to break into yeah. it and just see what's in it, right? So you know, yeah, that, that'd be a concern, I think, going forward. Yeah, so that's actually very easy to do. I looked at a couple of different options, and I think the best way to go is actually with PayPal. Mm -hmm. um, it takes literally less than a minute for me to set it up and put it on our website so that we have it now. So. Um, it's really just going to require the council saying, yeah, sure, PayPal sounds good. Um, I looked at a couple of other options yeah, that you do have to pay for, and PayPal mm -hmm. doesn't make you pay them for this as long as you're willing to wait a few days to transfer your money to the bank. So, so as long as it's, uh, you know, it's a free, free to set up, doesn't yeah. cost city anything. So, I think we do. I think we have to do it too. Okay. I mean, I don't know what we got to make a motion or. Yeah, if you want to say uh, somebody wants to move to use uh, PayPal for online bill pay. I think, well, I, I know in my business, I fought for everyone to get credit cards down the same way. Smartest thing I did when I started taking credit cards is people pay the bill. Yeah. So, and, and so I, uh, I'll i make a motion that we make it facilities for people to pay the bills online. With PayPal, right? Yeah, Okay, yeah. we're doing a lot cool. of that in our business. For, you can view your bill and just pay it. Yeah, we we'll go to our website, go on there and pay bill. Yeah, yeah, done deal. Yeah, that's great. Okay, Yay. we'll get awesome. work on that. 
Um, I am letting people know um, Community Services Consortium, which does the utility bill paying assistance, their application period uh, doesn't open until uh, the beginning of October. But uh, if you have an emergency situation, and they specifically said including water shutoff, then you can call at any time and go, hey, somebody's going to shut my water off, please help. So people know that. And the people who got shut off notices got a note that says, if you need help with utility assistance, call City Hall. We'll tell you that. Um, it's in the uh, the water, the most recent um, city newsletter, Water Says Utility Assistance. So, I mean, I hate shutting people's water off, but I like that we're giving them the how to reach out and get help with that. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're just, and it's also unfair to the people who are paying their bills, you know, if the other people don't pay their bills as well. So, yep. I want to give them two months I mean, yeah. to make some kind of an arrangement. I think that's more than fair. Yeah. Um, next up, a reminder of the conference schedules that are coming. So the 27th through the 30th, I'm going to be at the Oregon Association of Municipal Recorders in Newport. And then October 5th through 7th, I'm going to be at the League of Oregon Cities Conference in Bend. That costs $400, and I got a $400 scholarship to attend. So we're only Yay. paying for my hotel and the mileage. Awesome. Yay, it is great. Um, our operations slowed a bit in the last month, partially because it was a conference, and then I got bronchitis uh, and then there was a holiday, so yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm playing catch up with with uh, everybody on everything. It's kind of sad, but what can you do? I got bronchitis. Um, and well, you know, our uh, so a month or two ago, we appointed Peggy Bishop to the community service or community relations Box. recreation board. Yeah. Uh, she resigned today because she's going to be out of town for an extended period, taking care of a relative. Uh, so sad, but that's life. Um, the other one, uh, council filing or election filing period to uh, appear on the ballot ended on August 30th. We only had three candidates for three positions. That is Councillor Brian Lewis is running for mayor. Mayor Roger Perry is running for city council and Joe Parsons is running for city council. People can still run writing campaigns, but those are the only names that will appear on the ballot. So did that. Any questions? No, we can still do write-ins. Yeah, write-ins are still a... <laughs> yeah, I write-in candidates do have to accept it. If somebody, uh, if somebody tries to do a write-in campaign and they win, then they get it. If somebody doesn't try to do a write-in campaign, but enough people write them in anyway, they can go. No, I don't want to do this, and that's the that's end of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's up to whoever. If somebody wins a write-in campaign, they are allowed to accept or reject it. It's up to them. Yeah, this is oh, this is your last term. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. Gone. Yep. Okay. Let's go to public works report. Water update. Did you want to talk about the audit? Oh yeah, we met with the auditor a couple of days ago. That was fun. Uh, we talked about. Uh, he had uh, questions about city processes. Um, he has to go over every year. What do we do to take care of money and all that? So. We were able to write a much better answers than I think he's been provided in the past in terms of uh, segregation of duties between different people. Having an independent accountant take care of all of our money is way better, way better for us. So um, we talked about some concerns we had with previous administration, um, and he's going to go over all of that. But I, I think it was a, a good start. Um, everybody was emailed a copy of a questionnaire that this year it's a new requirement. City councilors have to fill out a questionnaire about um, just their opinions and observations about city finances. Um, if we, if anybody here needs a printed copy, you can stay afterward and I will get you a printed copy of that. Um, this is a, it's a new requirement. It also includes anybody who was on the council. So I let uh, former mayor Lori McAllen know that um, because she was on the council during that last fiscal year, she needs to fill in out too, so. I was lucky enough to be invited. So I was here with the auditor as well. Yep. And basically, he wants to know kind of what are, what are we doing different? You know, we get through the door, we now get to talk, we get to see there's all sorts of fail safes. We have the two people signing, he doesn't do the deposits, we have Linda here. So, bolstered a lot of the stuff that we're trying to do to have transparency. And he outright asked me, I don't know if you were in the room, if um, I knew, if I knew of any fraud or illegal activities and um, that have occurred. And I, I said, you know, quite frankly, I believe they have, but I said that's just my thought. I have absolutely nothing to do with it. So I wouldn't say. 
but he was very detailed and wanted to know, but also kind of left with the, you guys, you're doing a good job basically, and he kind of turned things around. So, and we asked him for, um, I did, we asked him for, tell, if you see something that we can do better, please tell us. So um, one of the things was having timesheets because he kind of rolled his eyes on the huge vacation payouts that occurred before and sick time. So Alex spoke to, you know, when he's sick, he tells the accountant and Alex has his timesheet and the guy said, well, you know, JD needs some timesheet. So there'll be a timesheet for us to be able to go look at. Um, I look at it occasionally, I don't know if anyone else does. And also a link to go see the budget or the finances that we given to so oh yeah he wants to make sure that we're engaged and we're watching that's right yeah his uh his main concern there was uh for the finance reports going forward and i'll be at the next city council meeting to make sure there's a um actual versus budget sheet right now this just shows everything we spent and it categorizes a lot um but there needs to be like a specific we spent this much out of uh, the travel budget that kind of thing. So we will do that going forward. That's actually the way it used to be. Though. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that, that just hasn't been in the reports that our accountant has been preparing, but I'm going to going to make sure that goes goes in again. There is a, a spreadsheet I have where I track mm -hmm. that just about every time. Um, yeah, usually about once a week I go in there and I just see how much we spent, how much we made. And I've got columns for every single line item. And I, I take care of it, make sure nothing's cool. over. We're not over on anything. So, oh, yeah. All right. And the lady I know. talked to us about the previous year budget. And I said, boy, I'd like to have some training on these government budgets. She said, I'll send that to you. She didn't. He has promised there's apparently free training out there if anybody has extra time wants to learn it to, to about doing the government kind of budgets. So, that was very nice. And he did, we've already got him on the calendar for December to come talk to us about the budget or the audit. and and how it goes and any issues and all of that so he's our auditor yep, yep. he okay. was the one who was supposed to be here but he was at a something yeah else. i think there was another city he had to do that day so but he's it's like six to four or something but the duck to come in here very very nice guy you know with my work we use a time clock yeah yeah Yep, I use Google Sheets to take care of all of that. So. Okay, I'm right. not ready to go. Oh, it's you, JD. <laughs> um, for last month, we had 3.4% water loss. I'm just going to give you that number from now on. You guys can see the other numbers if you want. That's awesome. Um, Today I went and bought Ace Hardware out of the padlock, so what if I have to lock people's water off? Um, they only have four. <laughs> they key to our key. And if I need more, they should have more in next Wednesday or Thursday. And that's when I'll be going and shutting off, I believe, next Thursday. Yep, you got set? Yeah. Okay. Um, all the meters are in now, so. That's a good thing. And just for those of you who might not know, we did start trucking water in last week. That's um, why it tastes funny. Probably. Uh, for parks, I had nothing, but we've had some problem with wasps over there lately. Um, Tim, he usually has been unlocking and locking the bathrooms for us. And the other day he went to unlock or open them and there was wasps swarming the lights on all oh, three cool. sides of the building. He went into the equipment room where I had some bee spray and he knocked them down. Um, since then, there's been a handful just dropping from somewhere in that, on the side of the building. I had one storm, well not storm, one bee buzz me down below, flew in my truck and out. And it's the only one I've seen other than the past. Um, some of the local kids that hang out up there a lot of them to watch out and be careful. Um, actually wasps are yellow crabs. They're black with like a couple of yellow stripes on the tail end of them. I'm assuming they're wasps. With a regular wasp, 
the thin ones are the only ones that can sting you. Okay. These guys and haven't been stay, aggressive. Yeah, they stay on the nest itself. Yeah. So the ones that are just flying around with their legs dangling like that are the males because they cannot sting them. Yeah, I'm not sure. These oh, they're not goodness. yellow, <laughs> like the yellow jackets with long legs or whatever. They're not like that. They're just you can walk over there and see them. There's some ponds lying on the ground. So yeah, maybe some sort of hornet. Um, streets, I have nothing to report. Miscellaneous. Habitat for Humanity, I believe, is going to start building up near the compound. If they today had a porta pot and porta sink put in up there on our drive. If I can add to that, they turned in their permits for that today. Okay. Um, everything looked good. At, when they got it, they actually marked subdivision on that. I was like, oh no, that's like a several month long process. It costs tons of money. And I called them up. I was like, is this a subdivision? They're like, oh no, sorry. <laughs> okay, good. Because we don't have, we can, no, no, no subdivisions. Sorry, that's not going to work. Um, <laughs> yeah, good luck. Um, yeah. Uh, and what other? The only other thing I had to throw out real quick was one of our customers who I door tagged today had reported leaks every day of last month. I spoke to them numerous times. I door tagged them several times. They swore up and down they had no leak. Well, they've shown no sign of a leak this month at all. So whatever's going on, they found it and took care of it. But I don't know what it was. Yeah. They also haven't paid their bill in several months. So, you're going to leak, pay your bill. Okay. Wow. Yeah, well, it wasn't seven. It was just a few. <laughs> Still. Oh, and then one thing that was here every, there's an ordinance that says every public works update has to list any ordinance violations. So there was one on one property. Being lazy, what is 1503? I know I did look That's just a nuisance ordinance. Oh. So. Which, you know, I was reading something, John, I don't know. But as far as when is the noise? Is it nine o'clock? Is it dusk to dawn? There's like yeah, there is a there's a specific time, time period. As I read somewhere where it was like dusk to dawn or something. And in the summer, it's this. It's like I just think we need to have consistency. Most cities, it's ten o'clock till six or seven, but I believe ours is nine to six. And so, is that nuisance just at night? What if somebody sets up a large trailer with lots of music right next to me at four o'clock in the afternoon? And there's, an, there's, an, there's an answer to that. <laughs> okay. So uh, section five, uh, subsection one, unnecessary uh, noises of our city nuisance ordinance. No person shall create, assist in creating, permit, continue, or permit the continuance of unreasonably loud, disturbing, or unnecessarily noise in the city of Sodaville and particularly between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. So it's not it's, just 9 to 6. Yeah. There was that gentleman who was talking about the motorcycle. Yeah. The so that's the idea. It's it's particularly that, but like during the day, you can't just go around making life miserable for people. Uh, yeah, let's see. There's a... No uh, gasoline uh, or other engines without mufflers, um, demolitions. Um, actually, you can demolish things during the day, but uh, not at night. So I think that's probably better. Don't demolish during the night. Um, don't operate any vehicle that's so loud it disturbs people. So motorcycles on that list. So no loudspeakers. Um, it's about dogs. Um, no dogs running at large. Clean up your dog's excretions. Um, excessive barking between the 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Vicious acts and your dogs breaking into people, uh, their homes or their shrubbery. So, yeah. So why is the dog barking at 11, but the other is particularly 9 to 6? I think, I don't know. I like, that seems inconsistent <laughs> to me and confusing. Dogs don't know what they're doing. People do. They have first watches. Mm -hmm. Right. It's true. <laughs> and 10 o'clock and ten is when people start coming to steal stuff because 
that's after dark. So dog barks after dark, they probably doing something that's but excessive barking. Yeah. You know, with devil's advocate, why between nine and eleven is it not considered excessive dog barking, but it can be particularly when there's a nuisance of noise. I just I mean because that's a two hour difference. I yeah. was wondering. Split the difference and put it all ten o'clock. I just think it should be a consistent. There you go. Well, uh, do we want to propose uh, an amendment to the ordinance and talk about it at the next meeting? Is it necessary? How many dogs are you barking after ten o'clock? I hear that there. It, it does not bother me particularly, but I just try to think, and I don't want to rewrite every ordinance man to man. Just <clears> it's just. Not a consistent message. And it's people to be confused. You know, it's 9 45. Is that a nuisance? No, it's a dog that can go till 11. Well, it's like we said earlier, you know, I mean, it's like my dog Teddy, you know, we were talking about him barking earlier, right? He's not a barker. He barks when Somebody something something's out there. Right. You know, whether it's a coyote or a cougar or a person. I mean, not he says, hey, like not on not on my property. That's what we're for. Exactly. But the ones that mark all night or all the time, that's not, not right for some neighbors. I don't I believe they have a right to file a complaint if you know if that's happening and you know, and then you deal with it. So but to just encompass it all for somebody to be an irritant to their neighbor, I don't think that's right. I think it would be nice. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you split the difference. I just think there needs to be a consistent. I have to agree because one thing says nine o'clock and the other thing says eleven o'clock. So which is it? I think you do need to control them, like I say, you know, yeah. I mean you can't have them out there just annoying barking for no apparent reason, you know, but I mean, even when we look for dogs, and my wife and I, you know, we've been looking for another dog, we look for ones that aren't barkers, right? I mean, we got them for a reason, and that's to protect our property. We don't want them out there. I mean, that drives me nuts. I go out and, you know, spray them down or whoop their ass. <laughs> Remember, we are on Facebook, so. Yes. Uh, excuse me, I'm just saying. <laughs> are you saying a nuisance is a nuisance? You know, we don't say motorcycles after a kid. I just think we need to have a consistent time. Whatever that I think that's fair. Oh, yes, please. That's fine. All right, we can have a discussion. Yeah, sure. Right. And then you also have a subject. Any more, JD? Um, no, I'm ready to adjourn. No. Yeah, almost. Um, we got new business right now. Uh, yeah, didn't really have anything new, just stuff we were following up on. So, okay. any business. business. All right, so we had the uh, the League of Oregon Cities legislative priorities. Um, so I talked last time about a joint letter that was being signed by um, several cities in the area. Now it's several cities in Lynn and Benton counties that want to sign onto this. So uh, the most recently uh, updated version of the letter uh, was provided to you tonight as only completed a couple of days ago. Um, so <clears throat> basically this is the letter that all the cities are going to sign that says, uh, we don't think the legislative priorities really had much to do with small cities. Um, there are only 17, there are 70 percent of the cities in Oregon have fewer than 5,000 people, but only 17 percent of the committee membership that wrote this were cities under 5,000. So they think there's a bit of an imbalance. The thing that I want that I, I contributed to this letter to try and make it a little more conciliatory is please explain your current selection process. That kind of gives them a way to say, well, here's how it happened rather than going, you know. Um, it's uh, it's kind of like a carrot to go. Hey, we're not we're not like completely mad at you. We just want to know. Just we'll give us some information, but also don't do this again. So, um, all the cities are going to be voting on it this month. Um, so I had a request to uh, move uh, to authorize the mayor to sign uh, the joint letter um, once it's all complete. So there's a suggested motion in there. Any questions? didn't include all the cities that were joining on you didn't miss them over here you didn't know this one here right? gotcha yeah since since the packet was written several more signed on to it 
Right, so um, I'm just curious who they were, and they're not on the new one. Yeah, they are um, not on the new one yet. Let's see if I can. Um, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it's, I guess. Uh, yeah, sure. Just more curiosity than anything. Yeah, I can provide everybody with a, a list after the meeting's over. I just don't have it off the top of my head. Um, in uh, Benton County, Monroe is going to sign on to it, for example. Um, Couple of other cities in Lynn County decided to join it as well. Oh no, you, you're you're allowed to vote on this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next one isn't uh, really an action item, just the city water discussion. Um, it's just talking about what else we're doing. Um, we're still trying to figure out uh, somebody who can get uh, another drill test done soon. A pump test, A pump test yeah, that's right. Um, the one that was done all those years ago that looked at it was done in January. So, you know, it's not really useful for those purposes. Yeah, right. So sooner we can get somebody to get a, a pump test there. So we're still working on scheduling that. That was something I was hoping to do. That was hoping to do sooner, but my timeline was interrupted because of illness and uh, traveling. So um, sad that got delayed. But hopefully, we can get that done as soon as possible because we need to get that pump test so we can get that money from IFA to get that well if it actually works. So, did you, you and I had talked about uh, across the street? Did you talk to anybody about that at all? You have any idea what I'm talking about? Several years ago, you guys remember John McKinney coming to the council and he has a spot over there across from a public area on the other side. Public area on the other side. So I talked to John about it, my folk had turn, but he's still willing to you know, basically give that to the city. Not that property. Public property is already given to the city as a public, as a public well, area, but I wasn't sure about that. He was trying to get the city to take ownership of it, and they all turned it down because of the past people that were in that. Yeah. Okay. How's that sound? Okay. Uh, so John is, and so my question, John, would the footprint for another reservoir over there, would there be enough room, and still we would be the room for Stuff like that, and you said, Yeah, it's no problem at all. Yeah, you're playing with it. It's a pretty large parcel. I was up there when I was up there when they put it in the stuff in, but it's up to two of that side. Yeah, so my idea was okay, if we could figure it out, or the engineering could figure it out, do some shut off valves around town, and just pump a few reservoirs across the street. I think you understand what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, and the fins that were gravity fed from up above, that may need a pump station to pump it out in the partial one. So right. kind of like we have the pump for the upper loop up there. Right. Yeah. So, so come from well to a boot to a tank up there beside the road and then use that to spurt out. So Whether it'd be feasible or not to do it. Yeah. I know we had talked about putting another tank down um, basically, like at the end of Rock Street several yeah. years ago. So, so off on that, off that abandoned city street, right? Right. There. It got where somebody to about that. that. Yeah. Right. So, what I'm saying is, you've got somebody that's trying to give this piece of property that's in a little bit higher elevation than what that is down there. Right. Okay. That would be easier for gravity flow of both part of the village or close to That's what I'm looking at. Engineer, so, yeah. It, yeah, it'd have to be engineered. You'd have to have some shutoff valves in some places to isolate parts of it. It takes some engineering to do it, but that way, if the well comes on board and you can put a reservoir across the street on city owned property, what's that? John's all for it. <laughs> Just as long as he pays the last year's property taxes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I took JD down and showed him the well. He'll probably keep it the well was at. It is a six inch case, which is kind of surprising to me. And it's a big hole. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that until I took JD in there a while back. It was wondering where that well was. I took it and showed him what was at. He went down and looked at it. 
Next time you do that, then you probably better call him. Speed said he was going to let Andy know that we yeah. were going oh, okay. there. Yeah. So, yeah. Because I saw this. He talked to Stephen Boyk up and talked to me about it. Okay. So he's like, yeah, I've got it. Well, his name is Stephen Boyk. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. all his alarms and cameras and everything. Pretty yeah. Nice, so. Uh, um, do you need bigger than a six inch case? No, you don't. No, that's just that. Usually, uh, the rest of like, well, it's got a smaller case, but like this, well, it's not there. It's in six inch, you need to I know. Okay. Put in what, 79? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. 76 or 79. But the logs is completely dated. Put that in his foot of logs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it seems like first step would be able to see if the well we can either put out in right. this in the summer. Well, that's later. what we need to and do. Next, yeah. I think yeah. I had contacted you about three different chunk outfits. Yeah. And we can do it. Uh, later. Yep. And do we have funds for that? We said we talked about before having special uh, funds. We can have a special meeting and use. Possibly, we have a little bit left over after we get the the plumber paid. We'll have a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah, we we'll have a little money. So, we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Well, well number one thing is we need to figure out those yeah. costs. Yeah, of course. We do. Uh, you've got well in it by a chance. Yeah. Kind of once. That's why I've never got anything done with <laughs> right. it. Yeah, it's it's just, it just keeps coming up. It keeps costs pile up. And what do we do? Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's why the state keeps going. Just do the inner tech. We just we already know. Okay. 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 Everybody wants it. It's going to cost too much money, and it's going to be too expensive for everybody to get one. There you go. Um, the regional solutions team for the area is supposed to meet uh, this month. Uh, with us in Waterloo to just kind of talk about the potential feasibility of uh, a treatment plant in an tie from Waterloo to here. So um, I was hoping to have the meeting date uh, already, but I haven't gotten the meeting date yet. Part of the problem is that Waterloo is having a transition to their own new uh, city manager. So uh, that makes it a little complicated. But, um, and the last one is at the CIS conference, I, I was talking to a lot of the other city managers from the area. And as a joke, somebody said, yeah, could we just build the inner type from soda build a Halsey since we're a little friendly with each other? And um, I said, well, you know, what we really could do is just have one gigantic water district that serves all the small communities in the area and talk with all the other small city managers. And they actually thought that was a good idea to have one, one centralized water agency that serves all of us, that can scale its operations uh, in terms of revenue collection, you know, providing services to everybody. So. I think we have the elevation right. We do. Soda will be the capital of the, <laughs> we call it the Soda Water District. Soda Water, well, like soda water. water Distribution Center. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So any thoughts on that? Vice Does President GMC. Yeah. <laughs> have any issues with water also? They need to rehab one of their wells. Um, it's got plenty of water. But the cost of rehabilitating it is way beyond their ability to ever pay. You know, kind of like us needing to wait 764 years to pay off the principal for the inner tie. It's going to be that same situation for them. They have money, so uh, it's it's a massive project that they're never going to be able to get by themselves. So, uh, yeah, sad. So that's that's the idea. There are several cities in the area that just have need for water projects and just. They don't have the ability to pay for it themselves and eventually the legislature is going to go okay well you need to figure it out or congress will or something like that so gotta do something. yeah i gotta do something and that would be the idea is to create a water district that handles it all so are we thinking of that as like plan b is plan a because I, I i feel we have lots of good ideas but i think we need to see one plan all the way through yes or no yeah and so that would be in I'm thinking is people are jacking the wall for lack of a better word. Yes. But that first, and if we find out it doesn't work, then the inner tie, and then if that doesn't work, then the soda. I have soda, water. soda water district. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think right now the council's priority is to figure out how we use our own water 
and then see what could happen in Waterloo if possible. Um, and then, I don't know, the Lebanon Energy is still officially on the table, but I don't hear any political support for it. I think it, if at any point in time in the near future, I just ask the council to formally vote, are we gonna do it or no? It's gonna be unanimous no. So um, that hasn't happened yet. And the state is happy that it hasn't yet. Um, if we ever formally vote, no, we're never going to do it. Then I think the state might get a little unhappy, and then that might. Be we bad don't want to do that. Yeah, like say we, we want to leave, we want to leave the option open. We want to see what our opportunities are here in the yeah. city. Like I said before, that's our, you know, primary revenue. We want to keep it our primary revenue. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think we we were asked basically by the people that we black handed, you know, we're going to need to come to them with a plan. Yeah, that we want, and so the impression was kind of like we were like not this and that, not this and not that. So yeah. coming with a plan, and then it's it's it. Quick and right. Yeah, and I think we got a plan. Yep. Figure out what the well can produce and see if it's supplemental enough to support our our needs. And if it is, go forward with that. Yeah. If we get funding. Yeah, I think we could finagle the funding for a fund test. Uh, we just need to contact some people and go, can you do this? And then have them do it. And then do we have to put that out to bid or is there a dollar amount? That we can... I think the city's procurement policy right now is like 10,000 at, at a max. So if somebody can do it for less than 10,000. Okay. Mark, reach out to later the year. They might have to do that too. I don't know for sure. There you go. And if they do, they may do it for nothing. Okay. Well, there you, you know, go. That's even better. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think maybe that you should reach out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All in favor? I mean, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without objection. I, I, I. The recommendation that you do that if you would. Yeah. I know if somebody compares what we're saying right now to what we said at the last meeting, we are definitely playing catch up because, again, I was sick and traveling. So sorry to the members of the public. Yes, this is a little repetitive, but uh, you can't fight bronchitis. So. Yeah, yeah. That's away. that. So, just so everybody knows, we're not we're not spinning our wheels. We're just yeah. interrupted. Yes. Nope. There's nobody on yeah, Facebook. Yes, that would be yeah. me. Um, since I was happily volunteered to be the board representative <coughs> of the council of government. I attended the first meeting today in Albany on site, on site, and it was very interesting. There was nobody at this meeting to represent in the county, which is where apparently our representation needs to be. Um, and so I was really happy to be there. I'm not quite sure I still understand what they do, but part of the meeting was they don't understand what they do because they're so broad. So um, my intention is if I can't make a meeting, Ask Alex to go, so I've given him all the materials. But I got I got the huge book, which is the training manual, and I read through it. Um, and I met with Ryan, the director, to try and get an idea of what's going on. Um, whoever is going to be the board person next year, uh, there's an orientation I think about February March, which is really good. I think whoever should attend that. But basically, this group may be able to offer us services to help us, like with grants. And also, they're the ones that are, and you guys may already know this and I don't, but senior citizen services, their meals on wheels, their veteran service, all sorts of things. And I don't know if our citizens in Sorterville are using any of it. So as I learn more about what COG offers, I just want to make sure that, you know, anyone you know in town you need to use meals on wheels? No, I, I, I'm sure so are citizens. But in the past and used to their services for repair and reception systems on the properties and stuff like that, some repairs. I know that happened two years ago. <clears throat> that's, been, that's very recent. I just I want to make sure. We should have some people that did know that really yeah. out here, but many more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's right, because uh, the old, old man down the hill, oh, uh, Charlie Crane, they got the ocean down there, they, they were around. It was right. Yeah, so I guess there was something that you know, you down here better. Their septic system failed, and the group came in and replaced the septic system for oh, her. That's good. It's, you know, yeah, the stuff is available for yeah. people to use, you know, if you just know it's there. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'd like to, for us, 
or me as I'm in this group trying to figure out. Um, I definitely want to, if there's something you want priorities on that they can help us with, let me know and I'll take it. But also I'd like to develop for us some kind of a cheat sheet, uh, whether it be online or in here, so that we can make sure our, our residents are aware of any of the services yeah. out there. They're, most of them, they're entitled, so you can't be uber wealthy. You may have to meet an age retire requirement or a financial, but you know, I really want to make sure if there's stuff out there for our people, yeah, yeah. Just get it. yeah. Yes. that's something I'll be putting in the newsletter next month to go, hey, we're part of this organization. Did you know Meals on Wheels, senior assistance, all that kind yeah. of thing? It's the kind of the idea behind. Yeah. 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 It's been around a little bit. People have known about it, but like I said, the last administration didn't really uh, push it too much or. Uh, Whatever. I think didn't see a way they were gonna make money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, anyway, um, I think so. yeah, I think a way to describe it is that the council of governments like this, and they were there used to be councils of governments in every region of the state. There are a few of them that just disbanded after a while. Like Northeast Oregon doesn't really have that. There's an Eastern Oregon Counties Association, but they don't let anybody else join. Um, Union County has a mayor's association, but they don't let anybody else join that either. So um, <laughs> the idea was that all these council of governments, like, okay, all the, all the governments in the region just want to have a common meeting space where they can regularly get together and talk about city issues or maybe anything, you know, because this one is, it's cities, tribes, special districts, counties. So it's not limited to any type of government. So the idea is that, okay, let's get together and talk about issues. Then once they start doing that, they go, okay, what else can do? And then each council of government kind of expands beyond that. So um, the council of governments here just has this really wide array of stuff where they were like, we need an economic development authority for the region. And they're like, well, we can form an economic development district or we can just use the Council of Governments to do that. So the Council of Governments for this region, for these three counties is also the economic development district. That kind of thing. So. They're APS, they work with the APS. I mean, the different things that they do are incredible. And at this meeting, like I said, there was no one county representation. There was a very interactive, the mayor from Albany was very interactive. It was a little bit difficult to interject, but I would say that. Thank you. Good representation here. Yeah, anything else on the agenda or the adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.